friends welcome to dr bone youtube channel today we are going to discuss about the topic principles of plating and we are also going to see the different types of plates and their working mechanism today we are going to know the types of plates there are three types of plates first one is dynamic compression plate which is also known as dcp and the second one is limited contact dynamic compression plate which is also known as lcdcp and third one is locking compression plate which is also known as lcp friends now we are going to see the working mechanism of dynamic compression plate suppose we have a bone and there is a transverse fracture now we are going to see how the dynamic compression plate helps us in fixing this transverse fracture so we have a eight hole plate so here one two three four five six seven eight we have a eight hole plate and this is also i'm going to see, uh, show you in two two views and we should also know two terms that is centric and eccentric so friends we have to know two terms that is centric and eccentric so what is mean by centric or centric screw centric means when we are going to fix the screw in the center of the oval hole of the dynamic compression plate we call that as centric screw so we are going to fix in the center of the oval hole of the dynamic compression plate okay now we have to know what is mean by eccentric suppose if this is the fracture line or the transverse fracture line in a bone and if this is the hole or the oval hole of the dynamic compression plate and when we are fixing away away from the fracture line okay so this is called as eccentric or eccentric screw so this is how we have to fix in the dynamic compression plate so which means which is away from the fracture line in the oval hole of the dynamic compression plate now let me show you with the example now whenever we are going to fix the fracture first we are going to put fix the screw in centric for the first screw fixation now let me fix one screw here in the center and the same thing in the center now when we are going to the other side of the fractured bone then we are going to fix the screw in an eccentric fashion which means away from the fracture line so i am going to fix it here i am going to fix it here away from the center of the fracture site okay because of this eccentric screw there is going to be compression there is going to be compression at the fracture site and the maximum compression which we are going to get with one uh, eccentric screw is around 1 mm what is the compression compression it is going to give us a compression of 1 mm and if we need more compression then what we are going to do we are going to fix another eccentric screw on the same side so i am going to fix another eccentric screw on the same side but before fixing the second eccentric screw we have to unthread this first eccentric screw and then fix it and by that we are going to get 1 mm compression for this second eccentric screw and then once you fix this second eccentric screw again you are going to fix the first eccentric screw so because of this second eccentric screw we are going to get 1 mm compression and because of this first eccentric screw we are going to get 1 mm compression so which is 1 mm plus 1 mm we are going to get 2 mm compression so by using two eccentric screws 
we are going to get the compression of 2 millimeter okay so let me show in the other way also so now i am going to fix two eccentric screws on the other side of the fracture side so because of these two eccentric screws we are going to get 2 mm compression So friends, in previous example, we have seen how to fix centric and eccentric screws. However, there are few other doctors which follow a different way. So in this thing, here we have a fractured bone, which I am going to mention it as A and B. And A part and B part is, we are going to fix it with the dynamic compression plate. And here it is from superior to inferior view and this is the lateral view. Okay, so on one side we are going to fix it in a centric fashion, the screw and the same thing. Okay, so on B side we have fixed the screw in a centric fashion and the on the A side, the few doctors they fix it in eccentric fashion. And after this, if they want to get more compression, what they do is they fix eccentric screw on the B side itself. But before uh, fixing the screw, they are going to unthread the centric screw and then fix the eccentric screw and then fix the centric screw. This is how they follow for more compression. So friends, we have already seen how to use dynamic compression plate in transverse fracture of a bone. Now we are going to see how we have to use dynamic compression plate in an oblique fracture. Okay, so this is very important for giving better com compression at the fracture site. In an, in an oblique fracture, we, we will fix the centric screw, center, center at the center, okay, here. And when we are going to fix the eccentric screw, we are going to fix on the other side. Okay, and it is the same here. So we are going to fix the centric screw on this side. And when we are going to fix the eccentric screw, we are going to fix it over here. This gives more compression at the fracture site. So friends, we have seen the working mechanism of the dynamic compression plate. Now we will see the disadvantages with the use of dynamic compression plate. So what is the main disadvantage with the dynamic compression plate? Whenever we use the dynamic compression plate, it leaves a footprint on the bone. Because of that, there was a compromise in the blood supply of the bone and this leads to the osteonecrosis of the bone. So there was a need for another type of plate. Then we came up with the lim limited contact dynamic compression plate, which is also called as LCDCP.